Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, in this video, if I have the courage and confidence to claim this title that maybe you're seeing, it's what it is. Okay, so most people come to me when I do spiritual readings and consultations and I talk to all of my fans and sub supporters. One thing primarily that they mention is that uh, they're drawn to my confidence especially the men and the young men. Oh, when I saw you, your level of confidence inspired me and motivated me to come and talk to you. I've been hearing this more and more, and you only see yourself through the contrast of other people. So if I was just living out my life, I wouldn't necessarily have noticed this about myself. I definitely noticed my strengths and also my weaknesses. But uh, only when someone points it out, or only when I can compare it to someone else, I understand my strength. Ah, oh, I'm like this because obviously I can see it now. There's contrast. So I was born this way. It's not something that I've necessarily developed, although I'll tell you how I nurtured this quality or this skill. I definitely wasn't like this all the time. But uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, my family is like this. My, first of all, my mother is very intense and ruthless, almost. Very, I hate using this word, strong, like, well, I'm a strong woman, but she kind of is a very tough person, which is admirable. It wasn't easy to grow up with her, but uh, now I see the benefits. My grandfather, my mom's uh, dad was also very, it's just this distinct quality, their ability to speak and communicate and their just, their ruthlessness. And the most intense person out of my family is my uncle, which is my dad's or my mom's brother, which he's the most intense. And when I was a kid living with him, or he would sometimes come to our house, I would be terrified of him. I would be so scared. So I'm, one day he laid down on my teddy bear stuffed animal and I was too scared to say anything to him and I told my grandfather hey come into the bathroom I need to tell you something and then I'm like yeah this guy's sleeping on my thing am I, can you please tell him something because if I tell him he'll probably eat me or something will happen he's a nice guy he's not a criminal or anything but that's just the energy and the vibe that he had very intense very scary guy so I'm like this I'm like a cutthroat human being uh it's a little bit of a contradiction also also because I'm very gentle, I'm very kind, I'm kind and compassionate towards animals, I don't eat them. I follow the five moral precepts as taught by the Buddha. And uh, along with many other things, I'm very polite and kind in public and social situations. It's only here in, on camera that I'm allowed to speak and truly be what I want without anyone being hurt by my words. My brother's in the other room, so I'm I have to taper my communication a little bit because he can hear me. I don't want to hurt him. But when I talk to the camera, I'm absolutely free to be what I want, who I want, however way I want. And in addition to this also, I've cultivated this. I've nurtured this. So this will uh, teach you how to be the same way. How am I like this? What, Whatever qualities you see me with, whatever confidence you think I possess, it has been acquired because I have come to the bottom of myself. I know who this person is. I know how this is. I've investigated my mind and I have no shame anymore. That's a very big distinction. Shame. Shame keeps you from having what you want. Shame keeps you from speaking the way you want. Shame keeps you from acting, dressing, looking like everything the way you want. Shame. God forbid you start doing the things that you want and others' pressure is going to pressure down upon you and crack you. Something happened recently, yesterday in fact. Some person reached out to me on both platforms actually. Uh, and they said, oh, this person that's very high up in the Isha Yoga Center, a person that's responsible for doing certain things, he wants to contact you. It's very urgent. I'm like, okay. And then I contacted and he said, yeah, your recent video that you talked about Sadhguru, it, he said, it's not in the right light. You need to change the title or delete the video or something. I got a little bit scared 
little bit nervous, a little bit frightened. Maybe Sadhguru, I'm sure Sadhguru doesn't even know who I am or that I exist. But I want to be very kind and compassionate towards that organization because it's done so much for me. And also I was a little bit compelled to say yes and comply because the high up organization now is thinking about me. Apparently some man that's in charge of doing things in the ashram is uh, reaching out to me and they have a problem with my YouTube video. Uh, at first I thought this is just nonsense. It's my private channel. I'm not associated with you at all whatsoever. Why do you care? Uh, well, okay, I kind of get it. Uh, you know, I've been uh, influenced by Sadhguru so heavily, so it makes sense. And I have a, a little bit of responsibility for the way that I present myself here. So I, I complied and I changed my, my uh, thing. And I asked him, okay, this is the result here. Let me show you a picture. Is this acceptable? And then he said something which I instantly knew his whole life and personality and his whole energy and it put me off. He said, oh, it's better than before. Uh, I'm saying it nicely and gently. He's like, yeah, it's better than before. With three dots or continuation. So there was more to be said. And instantly I thought, okay, who is this guy? This guy can jump into a pile of hay and uh, why did I listen to this man in the first place if I knew he was like this? Who are you, buddy? Who are you? And why are you doing this? Why are you contacting me? And then I basically I told him to shoo. Okay, go ahead, shoo. Maybe you're watching this video. Hopefully you're watching this video. Never again, okay? I'm gonna have some, I have some choice words about Isha and the Isha Foundation and, and what I think is going to happen, okay? So here I go. that organization is going to fail, okay? There's no, there's no point of uh, tiptoeing around it. Now this is a second confirmation that I have, two, two times individually, that I'm pretty much guaranteed for certain that uh, the spiraling downwards is gonna collapse so fast once the master leaves, it's gonna be funny to watch. I'm gonna get, grab a pile of popcorn and I'm going to eat while it happens. Do I wish for it to happen? I don't wish for anything. Okay, don't uh, think that I'm here conspiring against someone or conspiring for someone. I'm not so foolish as to wish or to think that I have some outcome in this game. No, I'm just going to see what happens. Why? Because I've seen the people that are doing these things. And it, 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 first of all, it made my sense of self inflate because I see that the most prestigious spiritual organization, uh, how they are, how the highest people in that organization, how they are in their energy, how they're in their mind and consciousness, either I'm some sort of amazing human being, which I know I'm not, or the mass majority, majority of people are just so bad. It's like so bad. You're the only person that can read and everyone else is a kindergarten reading level. Either reading is the most hardest, challenging thing in the universe, it's so hard, or it's like, uh, how do you not, how do you not read? How do you not think to take the time to read? Are you something going on with your brain? Can you not read? Are you challenged in some way? How does this happen? Maybe I've spent more time on this path than they have, probably most likely. Maybe that the people and the beings that fully go, uh, fully transcend, they're no longer here, so they can't be used as an example also. But borrowing the words from Sadhguru, the wise master, you can see right here, right behind him, that uh, there's been hardly a dozen or so, or maybe a little bit more people that have fully mastered their own energy system. So the it speaks to the level of poverty here on planet Earth. You're, you're poor, spiritually poor. It's like I'm walking around with a few dollars in my pocket and everyone else has pennies. Should I think I'm some sort of rich man? No, you're just all poor. Like, can you not get it? Please get this. So as I'm saying, this is the second time this uh, organization has, uh, I've lost faith in the Isha Yoga Center very heavily because the first time I saw how things are there and how the people that are running this and I was very uh, distant and disillusioned. Like what? I thought this would be, people would be walking around like masters and there would be more impressive beings there. No, that wasn't the case. And the way that they treated me also with some little respect to something, it was like, oh my God, it's just pathetic, pathetic, okay? And okay, I kind of get how they treated me for this little thing that I did, but the way it was done, the way it was scary is so embarrassing and pathetic. I'm, like, I'm embarrassed for you, I'm embarrassed for you. How, how, how does the situation happen? If you wanna know more about this, maybe you have to reach out to me. I'm not gonna really discuss this here in public. 
But that was the first time I thought maybe I'm okay. Maybe I'm wrong because Sadhguru is amazing. Sadhguru is amazing, by the way. Let me just uh, uh, point out a few words about Sadhguru. Sadhguru, if he was standing next to me and he said, "You're breathing the wrong way," to me, hey buddy, you're breathing the wrong way. Okay, uh, let me change our breathing. How's this? Is this better? Uh, what way do I need to breathe, Sadhguru, for you to feel like I'm breathing adequately? That's the level of respect I have towards that man. That's the level of malleability and guidance I'm willing to follow him with whatever he says, whatever he does. Hey, your uh, thing needs to be done a little bit here. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. That's, I've never, of course, met him in person, but that's how it would be like if I saw him in person. So then it comes his organization. Obviously, it's an extension of him, but it's run by individual human beings. And you're not like Sadhguru, okay? So you reaching out to me, hey, your little YouTube channel needs to be changed or your little YouTube title needs to be changed because it's not in light with our thing. Buddy, what light are you with running with, okay? Are you some sort of uh, man that I'm supposed to be impressed with and follow your guidance because what? Because you tell me that it's not in accordance with it? Buddy, I know what... <laughs> I know what light is and what light isn't. Trust me, much better than you, okay? So you're in no position or, or, or authority to tell me anything to do with my channel. Anyways, that's past the point. That's already done. So the second experience that happened to me yesterday, this, this man, apparently maybe I'm being pranked, but I don't think so because the way that I was contacted, I was contacted by a very big, Sadhguru YouTube channel, you know, a private one, one that re-uploads Sadhguru's videos. Um, his name is the, this is the last time, 114. Maybe you've seen it. It's like 100,000 subscribers or more. It's very nice. He's one of the better ones, more conscious, because the way he puts out videos, I can tell. It's very easy. Through the camera, I can see this person who he is, meaning his energy and his, his quality. And he puts out these videos, and <clears throat> I've been recommended them many times. Let me just get a drink of water. <clears throat> I've been recommending these videos many times, his videos, so I was very impressed that he contacted me. And uh, a little bit like, oh, yes, I'm, I'm doing things now because things are happening like this. Cheers, Shiv Shambo. Very interesting. So he reached out to me. <clears throat> and obviously, you know, he wouldn't just reach out to me for no reason. So he told me, hey, contact this person, this Swami. He's in charge of uh, <sighs> running the e-media. Apparently, he's a big uh, YouTube. Uh, he's in charge of running the YouTube or the uh, online media for Sadhguru, which that's a, that's a prestigious title. And I would hope someone would have the sense to go about these things in a, uh, you know, a more positive manner. Not like how I'm doing. <laughs> and uh, so then this happened and I said, uh, you know, he texted me saying, oh, this, uh, it wasn't even bad. You know, on the title and the thumbnail of my video, the title of my video, the video that's in question was Sadhguru, 150 cops raid Sadhguru's ashram. Maybe he didn't like the fact that that happened. Hey, maybe you don't like the facts. Too bad. Go sit and meditate for a little bit more. Maybe you'll come to realize the actual things that are happening and just be in alignment in accordance with that. Should it have happened? I don't know. I don't think so. But I'm not in the, not in the business of dealing with shoulds. <laughs> I'm defending myself, okay? That's why I'm talking this way. I'm defending myself. <clears throat> So, should it have happened, I don't care. Well, it's a fact that 150 cops went and started investigating the place. That's the title of the video, okay, buddy? You're getting it now? Good. Then in the thumbnail, I asked a question on the very top. Hey, is Sadhguru going to jail? Very clickbait. 10 out of 10 clickbait. So good clickbait you can taste in the tip of your mouth. Oof, I'm proud of myself for that one. But... I made it ambiguous because I put a question mark in the end. That's how you keep yourself safe. If you make statements that are untrue, you're just lying. But if you question, mm, maybe, is, is this happening? Well, is it happening? I don't know for sure. Neither can you say you know for sure. All right, there you go. So I'm doing this primarily and mainly for entertainment. 
second for education and information. You're getting it now? Good. And this man going to some private YouTube channel, going to me saying, hey, please take it down. It's not in, he didn't even say please. Hey, you know, take this down. It's either deleted or taken out. I should have, it's just so bad. I'm pointing to the fact that the Isha Foundation is toast. It's done. Because the people that are in, uh, in charge of this organization, their bedrock is Sadhguru. They don't have anything within themselves. Once the bedrock is gone, 60% of that whole place is done. Finished. Poof. Cracked. The only thing that's going to matter, the only thing that's going to be maintained is the actual energy of Sadhguru, which is going to live out for a very long time, and the actual practices and teachings that he's put forward, and the people that have actually truly grasped this in, his own, in their own bodies. So lots of, mm, lots of falling down is going to take place in that organization for sure. I can see it. I'm going to make a prediction here uh, that uh, this is going to happen. So yes, there you are, buddy. Hope, uh, hope I've entertained you in this video. The person that's uh, watching my videos, good job. <laughs> and uh, what else? Many more things need to be said or shared. Let's talk about this prediction that I made that Sadhguru is going to pass away, leave, shed his body. I've said this well, a few months ago when Sadhguru was going through this thing. And I knew, like almost with 100% certainty, this is going to happen. Why? I'll give you this analogy, okay? This is the example. You're at a circus and you're watching a circus performer walk a tightrope. And you're aware of physics and gravity and you've lived on the planet for quite some time. Then the, the circus is he's going and he's trying to appear that he's falling, but he's not falling. And then something happens which he goes so far off balance, you know he's reached the tipping point. It's, there's no coming back. Unless there's some miracle, unless like a huge gun to a wisp a huge gust of wind pushes you back on the rope or some, I don't know, God comes and, hey, come on, come on, come on, come over here. You're going because you've reached the tipping point. You've reached the point of no return. Gravity has now taken over. There's no leverage for you to get back on. That's basically what Sadhguru was appearing like to me. It's, that's it. Like, that's it. You're so thin. You're so minimal. You're like a hair strand, maybe two hair strands or two little cotton threads. One little, shh, that's it, over, poof, see ya, have a good time, goodbye, next time. That's what it was like. So I'm saying, okay, buddies, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, the, the, the master is uh, basically going away. This is, this is happening. Uh, the outcome that I see is things are going to happen. So you do urgency, urgency, <laughs> because the man is so amazing. Do whatever you can to either spend time around him, go to the Isha Yoga Center, or really pray and intensely, intensify your practice. You should have seen the comments in the videos down below when on these videos. People are crying. People were like upset at me, almost like crying to me. Why are you saying this is so like that? Oh, oh my God, that's what? Come on, come on, buddy, get it together, get it. You know. Uh, shape up. So, un unfortunately, my prediction didn't come true. It's not unfortunately uh, for him. That's very fortunate for Sadhguru, but unfortunately for me, because I didn't foresee <laughs> the powers at hand. I didn't foresee that uh, something would be come on, come on, Sadhguru, come on. You got it, you got it. Uh, now keep walking. And now he's like back to normal. Well, he's not back to normal. Something has, was lost within him. I can see it in his recent videos. Still, maybe he hasn't recovered yet. I don't know. But he's back on track. Wow, I did not foresee that at all. I thought pretty much like if I was a betting man, 98% of my chips, I'd be like, okay, this man, that's it. Unless some, again, a gust of wind comes or some higher force, some God comes, come on, let me take you by the hand. Let me take you back on the tightrope. That's the only way, that's the only thing that happened. So he did that. That's fantastic. And so I just wanted to explain that to you. And similarly, I want to explain to you this Isha Foundation. Because the Isha Foundation is not Sadhguru. Sadhguru is Sadhguru. The Isha Foundation is Sadhguru's work. Sadhguru created this, but it's run by individual human beings. And if the individual human beings don't shape up and don't uh, work well together and don't, I don't know, let go of their delusions quickly and absorb the wise master's knowledge, then things are not looking too hot.
And this is the second example, second confirmation that I've got. Ooh, things are not going to be so good for that place once the master leaves. Reach out to me for a spiritual consultation, my friends. If you want a spiritual reading with me, if you want to chat with me, discuss your life, I can see into your life. Uh, I've, I can see many things about you and I can see clearly your life. So no better place for you to go and talk to, no better person you can get help from on spiritual matters than myself. And this doesn't cost a lot. I'm doing this all on a donation basis. This is the fairest way of going about it. So you feel like you want to give me whatever you want to give me afterwards, or if you don't at all, you can do that. So it's all on donations. And you can reach out to me via the Facebook link or the Instagram link, whatever way you can contact me, contact me there. 